So for me, I ask myself, does it move the companies forward? Does it move my family forward? And does it move me forward? And if it doesn't fit within those criteria, it doesn't go in my book. Welcome to the Chasing Mountains podcast. I'm Dave. This is Jacob. How are you? I'm good, buddy. Good. Well, um, I'm, I'm, I lied. I have to be honest. I'm a little under pressure lately. And I feel like you are as well. Yes. Yeah. So we've both had a lot going on mm-hmm. in life and uh, we'll tell you a little bit about it. All good stuff. Wonderful for the most stuff. Part, just, yeah. uh, just busy. And, Feeling uh, the pressure. Yeah. And so one of the things you know, that we want to accomplish with this podcast is to learn. That's kind of a central theme of, of why we're doing this uh, is to learn and to get better. And, uh, and then as a byproduct, we want to, of course, share that with the people that watch. So um, we felt like this week with everything we had going on and we're just kind of both talking about how busy we are, um, perhaps it made sense to spend a little time thinking about time management mm-hmm. and talking about time management and assessing, you know, what are we doing to not only waste time, but how can we be making better use of the time that we have? So, Correct. so with that in mind, one of the strategies for making better use of your time is to set time for a task, allocate time for that task and work within that task and move on. And we're and, terrible at that when it comes to podcasting. <laughs> we say it's only going to be 15 to 20 minutes and then an hour later. Yes. But today we've actually set a limit. Yes. This podcast will end when that buzzer goes off. Yes. So whether we're in the middle of talking about something, because he actually has to go to work tonight. It's it's seven o'clock right now. You still have to prep for work tomorrow. Yeah. And I got to get home and be with the family because I've been working all week. And so feeling the pressure, feeling the pressure. But I mean, when this goes off, we're done. Yeah. So we kind of have to go through this a little briskly today. Yeah. But so that's okay. That is part of that. Like I said, it is one strategy for time management is to say, I'm going to work from this time to that time. And then when that time passes, then you're done and you mm-hmm. move on. So I would say this is something though, that I do struggle with a lot. I love time management. I feel like I'm better at it than I've ever been in my life. But I will say when I'm enjoying working and I'm doing something, I'm like, ah, it's okay. I'll only go five more minutes. And the next thing you know, 25, 30, an hour later, I'm like, well, shoot, I just threw off my entire day. Mm-hmm. But before we get into like maybe things that we learned about, let's, let's talk about like why it's important. And um, for me, it, when we were studying about this for this podcast, I was surprised on how quick I went down the more philosophical way mm-hmm. of thinking about time management, why it's important. A lot of times it's like, well, how much stuff can I shove within this time? How efficient can I be? And obviously I thought about that first and we all want to be efficient, but I think it comes back to why. First off, we're here on this earth on a very limited time. I know when we're young, you young ones, I know we have a lot of young listeners. You feel like you're immortal and you feel like you're going to live forever, but the reality is you're not. And when you start to think about that, you really start to value your time. And I know everybody says time is money. Time is money, you know? And the reality is that's, that's bullshit. Time is life. And whatever you choose to do within that moment, you are choosing to do that versus everything else that's important to you in the, in, in your life. So if it's work and you're working too much, if you're, you know, too much at the gym, you're too much watching TV, you're choosing to do that for your life. And so for me, when it comes down to time management, it really comes down to, I have a limited time of my life. What am I going to do? And so I try to be as efficient as I can with work, leisure, time with my family. And uh, I know that's my why. Just in talking about it, I'm realizing like how much of a motivation that is for me to not waste time. I'll call myself out and get frustrated at myself when I start realizing that like I'm just scrolling on my phone or I'm doing a task that's wasting time. You know, we all have the same 1,440 minutes in a day. Mm-hmm. I hate wasting those minutes. Mm-hmm. Like it really, really to my core. Has it changed you at all with having a, a new kid? Yeah, but the change happened before. Really? To the point where I, I knew what was coming and I knew what to expect. But yeah, I mean, we've got an eight week old now. And uh, as of yesterday, very limited time. It's Well, it's, first off, it's eight weeks already. It went by that quick. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, well, pff, nine months of, it's actually more than that. It's, it's, you know, it was 42 weeks of pregnancy too that went by like that. But um, when did you start to feel the pressure of like time? Like I really started to feel it around 25 of like, okay, we're not here forever. Was mm-hmm. there something that motivated you to have that different thought, a different mindset of being efficient with some, your time? Yeah. I mean, like some of it is work. Um and in some of it, I think is like, you know, buying a house because suddenly there's all these things to, to maintain and to, to keep up, uh, you know, with the home that like 
everybody wants a piece of your time. And if it's not a person that wants a piece of your time, it's, it's your responsibilities that want to want a piece of your time. And, you know, my day job, I work at a fortune 100 company in marketing with teams of creatives and also internal clients within the organization. And, you know, my situation now basically like clock in figuratively in the beginning of the day and just, I'm getting like blasted with emails. I get about a hundred emails a day. It's like trying to drink out of the fire hose day after day after day. A perfect example. And, uh, and I guess if it's okay, like, I mean, let's, let's talk about what we have going on mm-hmm. in life. Yeah. Um, you know, I have, I have that going on during the day and I just got back from paternity leave. And so I switched to kind of a new, new focus within the organization. Which so might as well be a new job. It's new people, new clients, new ways of doing things, new atmosphere. Yeah. And it's um, more, it's, it's not more. just new, but it's a lot more and it's more complex. So like I have like 70 clients internally within our organization that I now serve, you know, and I feel that, I feel that increase um, on top of it, the team that. Um, I'm a part of to support those clients has, has reduced pretty dramatically, like, uh, right before I got on board. So the mm-hmm. workload is really heavy. And on top of that, we've got, you know, our baby, um, which is. And for those who don't have children, I mean, the young ones are the difficult ones, you know? Like yeah. They, but like, man, it's definitely the why, you know, like sure. I want to get all this other stuff done and out of my plate so I can spend time sure. with her and with my wife. But, um, so Not to mention, like you're trying to sell your house as well. Yeah. So on top of that, you know, like that's my, you just, uh, we already talked, I already showed you my bathroom, but yeah, I got paint on my hands from So he just came down from upstairs. He's painting. You guys are drywall mudding. You're doing everything you can to make the house as nice as it possibly can before yeah. you sell it. We're doing this. We're doing this. Tell, tell us about what you got going on. Dude, I have two kids. You know that. I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old and I spend a lot of time with them. I've got... My wife, who has a pretty good sized salon and with about 10 or 12 employees. And so we're doing a lot of work there. I also am working on some video production uh, for the, obviously the podcast, but also I I do this for a living. Mm-hmm. So I've got a job coming up that I'm prepping for doing all the emails, doing the connections, the scheduling and finding freelancers to work for the, you know, the project. So I, I'm definitely feeling the pressure. Well, plus we were talking about recently too, like you have for a variety of reasons, like You've got all the administrative stuff that mm. comes with with running businesses right. that you've had to deal with lately too, I know. Right. There's yeah. constantly things you have to be doing. Uh, you know, got to make sure payroll's out when, you know, they want their paycheck, when they get their paycheck and as they deserve, but then also you have to pay taxes on it. There's yeah. so many things to do. Yeah. And if it wasn't for time management stuff and things that remind me, honestly, I'd forget half the stuff. So, well, so do we want to talk about that? Yeah. So we already talked about kind of the why it's important because it's our life and why it's so important to actually be efficient. Um, For me, I want to also schedule, like I said, time with my family. I want to schedule even rest time because a lot of times as an entrepreneur, if we sit down and do nothing, which our body needs to rest, our minds need to relax a little bit. I'm not real good at that. You're not really. Oh, I'm terrible at it. I feel guilty. I feel like I should be doing something. But if I put it down on my list as part of the thing that I need to do to be better tomorrow, to be better on the next task, I all of a sudden can relax because I've got 20 minutes where I'm supposed to do nothing. That's my task. So specifically for me, the thing that helped me the most is this little bitty book right here. I know it looks like a little bitty Bible, but um, what I do every single day, and I've been doing this for over a year now, I write down my task on one side of the page and priority of the task. And I put a time range of when I need to have that done. I'm not very specific. I am not one of those who do, does well that at 1230, I do this. And at one o'clock, I do that because my day ebbs and flows so much. You know, there's something happens with an employee or my child. I have to be very flexible. So what I'll do is I'll put the most important stuff at the top of my list, my list, and I will make certain that I get that done at the beginning of the day when my willpower is high. Because if I'm counting on future Jacob at 9.30 at night to get work done, he's lazy. I'm telling you, 9.30 <laughs> Jacob at night is lazy and tired. But um, Most people are. And that's what I'm about to be when I, I'm about to sure. be 9.30 Jacob when uh, I've got to get ready for work. Well, 9.30 <laughs> Jacob is really good at convincing himself that, you know what, I don't need to do this. And mm-hmm. so for me, it's, it's important to get this done. Top of the list is very important to me. If I don't get that done, I actually will write down at the bottom of the day that it was a bad day or Mm -hmm. a good day. But on the top of my list too is also about spending time with my family. 
spending time with my wife and also taking care of myself. Yes, there's tasks and to do's, but at the end of the day, I always recap my day and I put my day in review. I review my own day mm. and how I did. I'll, I'll talk about my, my kids, the task I needed to do, how I felt that day. And, you know, there's a lot of times it's like eight like crap, feel like <laughs> crap. That was my full day. Like I just, you know, um, so for me, as far as when it comes down to time management, go ahead. Yeah. I want to ask you a question about your notebook. Yeah. So like, it's obviously pretty small. Very small. Is, is it part of your strategy to basically like limit your to-do list to like one page yep. for the day so that, you know, you don't end up with like yes. 30 things yes. to do. I, that's an obvious that's, thing. I don't know like, why I didn't ask. That I thing. love a to-do list yeah. personally, because like, you know, our, our brain, our brains are not wired to like retain all this information. Mm -hmm. We're, I, I think, wired to like, like connect the dots mm -hmm. and kind of build out these equations and like, if then type mm -hmm. scenarios. And I think if we're constantly like filled with, Oh, I got to do this today. And I got to do that today. And don't forget that. And don't forget this. Then you mm -hmm. sort of, you're, you're operating in a state where you're just checking things off the right. list and not you really to like do yourself out of business. Yeah. So, quickly. so for me, I ask myself, does it move the companies forward? Does it move my family forward? And does it move me forward? And if it doesn't fit within those criteria, it doesn't go in my book. As far as like, the, like, what about like, you know, so, so for example, like the electric bill, right. then. like for me, that goes on my to-do list. So if, that's not on the to-do list. That's in my reminder. Okay. I put that in my task mindless thing. Mm. And when I get that, I will instantly walk over and do it. If I don't, I forget. And then there's a backup one that goes to my wife because she's the one. My wife is more of the does the daily task stuff. I'm more along the lines of like how to move the family forward. How, would I, how do I, you know, I'm more of a big thinker. In my little book, the reason why it's so small is like I need it to be small. Like you said, there's only 10 spots to do. Well, that's what I say because my to-do lists, like they end up, I start, you know, right. like compiling them. And before I know it, it's like, how am I going to do all this? I need a sense of achievement. Yeah. If I have the to-do list, like we have a to-do list for um, Chasing Mountains podcast, that's a long ass list. I will break that down and put it in my book throughout multiple days. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I feel like I'm, that checking that off feels so good at the end of the day. And the ones that are hard, that ink is deep and checked, <laughs> you know. Um, so you'll take a big sort of like <clears throat> primary archive list mm -hmm. and break it into yes. smaller like daily chunks. Yes. Like pull a, pull a few tasks off of that, drop them on the day. We have a master list and yeah. it's hundreds of things that need to be done, categorized into multiple things, different. Each endeavor that we're taking on, our podcast, there's an entire list. My wife's salon, an entire list. My production company, an entire list. Um, me personally with my family, an entire list. And it starts to feel like this, just this pressure. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is and I, I've had this happen. I hope I, I think you have as well, but you just decide that nah, I'm not doing any of it. Yeah. Not, not oh, yeah. one thing on my list. Am I going to do? Cause the pressure is too big, but by breaking it up into this little bitty book that I can put in my back pocket that goes everywhere with me. And I'm a notebook King. I've got notebooks everywhere, all different sizes. And I've tried them in many different ways. Uh, this is the only thing I've ever done that's lasted over a year. Mm. And it's been I, I would say our families move forward. I've moved forward personally. I mean, I put on here, like every single one of these books is a quarter, one quarter. Hmm. It fits out perfectly that every single day in a quarter fits in this book. Hmm. And I write down the quarter. And then when I'm done, I recap. There's one full thing about recapping my month. Um, also, I have a master list on the back of like, what's my core values? So anyways, this isn't really mostly about time management, but it's more so about- Well, it's kind of central though to pri prioritization maybe, which allows for better time management, right? Right. It really does. Because then I can break my day down into what needs to be done. And when I'll look at my day sometimes and be like, oh, half that stuff is junk. I don't need to do that. I can do that three weeks from now and it's not a problem. Hmm. For you personally, what is your struggles and what do you try to do to fill that? Atomic Habits, which I believe you read the book yep. not that long ago, which we should do a podcast on. Is it Clear? James? Mm -hmm. James Clear? James Clear. I feel Something like that's like a that? stage name. Something Clear? Something Clear. Isn't it kind of like 1% better a day? Yes. There's, a, there's a few different things that he teaches in the book, but like these little micro improvements, yep. they compound over mm -hmm. time. And if you try to just make all these different parts of your day, if you try to just get 1% better each day, then suddenly you're like dramatically better in all ways. Because it compounds. Yeah. 
you kind of take that idea, but flip it in reverse. Mm-hmm. And that's what I struggle with. I have these like little interruptions throughout the day that I sometimes feel like I need to address them right now. For me, that's, that's like a big, it's been kind of nice actually to go back to the office a little bit coming off of COVID because, you know, at this point I've got a baby at home. I've got two dogs at home that can't seem to get on the same. And like, annoying brother-in-law talking to you all the time about schedule. the podcast. <laughs> well, sure. Fine. But we, you know, like I get all, I get interrupted constantly uh, with emails and, and, you know, chat messages from work for things that are urgent or needed or whatever. But like, even like starting our, our podcast here, a lot of the times, like last minute, right before we start, we're like, oh, let's, let's grab a coffee or, or like, uh, let's, let's, oh, I need a charger for my phone. Mm-hmm. These little tasks that add up throughout the day for me, they se- just seem to like always kind of be there. And I need to put myself in positions to, to eliminate those, to set those aside, to ignore them. It's been kind of my, my mission and my goal to try to like reduce the amount of barriers to actually doing the thing, mm-hmm. you know, like I always want to do the thing, but then there's all this stuff that, that pops in or has to get done first. And it's like, let me just avoid those things from ever getting in the way or just shoving them aside. So like that's, that's been a challenge for me, I would say. Yeah. It's tough, man. I struggle with time management, but I've been trying to be as diligent as I possibly can, because the truth is at the end of the day, I want to be with my family. That's why I work so hard because I want the money to be able to spend more time with my family. I really don't want to exchange my time for money much anymore. I, I want to build a business in which it can function by itself in which that I can then spend time with my, my family, have the money to give to somebody. You know, I don't, I don't have the money at the, this time to just give to someone that could change their life, you know, family members and, and allow them to spend more time. You know, my mom and dad, they work too hard, you know? And sometimes I wish that they had more money that they could just relax and go on a vacation, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking today, you know, about this idea also of like a singular focus (laughs) and, you know, we're both bad at this. I I might be worse, um, but we both have like a whole lot of interests. And so when it comes to like, and I know that you've done this to me, so thanks a lot. But like our brains now are constantly sort of calculating like, oh, hmm, maybe that thing over there could be a business yes. or how do they make money at that? Could I make mm-hmm. money at that? Like mm-hmm. there's this kind of been before you know it, like you've gone through your day and you've started like 50 businesses. Yep. Which I have is, a broken brain that can't shut that off. Which is great. Cause like, you know, it, it will, that, will, that serves us well. And I would not, I wouldn't want it any other way, but <clears throat> there was like an analogy that I saw. That was like, if you, if you sort of like picture a circle, you got like, this is kind of, this is you. It talked about basically like if you're pulled in like 10 different directions, like imagine it's like a, like a sun or something is you're pulled in 10 diff- different directions. If you're going to only have like 10 inches of progress that day, if you're only going to move the needle like 10 inches, but you're pulled in 10 different directions, mm. you're only going to get an inch of progress right. in all ways. But if you have a singular focus, mm-hmm. You decide, okay, this is the direction I'm going. You're going to get 10 inches of progress in that particular focus or whatever it is. And it got me thinking like, it got me thinking about like predators in the wild. Crocodile, a lion, a snake. You think about these predators that are on the hunt. I like watching the Discovery Channel, so I can picture it pretty easy. If if you do too, you, you know what it is. But like, they are laser focused. There is no distraction in that moment. There's, you know, there's like, there'll be a fly like landing in a lion's eye. They are totally owned in to that, that prey. And they will sit there like a, like a snake or a crocodile will sit there and be like totally still because if they don't get that prey, if that, that hunt fails, they could die for them. That is the sole priority. It doesn't matter what else is happening. It doesn't matter what's going on in their world or, or what possibly other potential prey they have decided. I'm going to eat that, that gazelle at the water's edge. Terrifying. I am coming for you. You get the point that, you know, for me, I just thought like, what if I were to approach some of the things that I need when it comes to time management, like suddenly time management becomes a lot more easy when mm-hmm. you really assess like what you do in your notebook, assess like what has to happen today. Like what do, what do I really need to focus on and get done? I'm going to be trying to, to approach some things a little bit more like that lion, like that crocodile where I have to achieve it or else there's some, some big problems. Yeah. And uh, if, I think if I can live in that, that mindset, that's going to help too. So like that sun analogy you were talking about, I'm pulled in many different ways. And yeah. a lot of times I just need to stay laser focused, like you said, but that's it. I think we're out of time. That's it. We're out of time. We got to, we got to do what we said. Yep. That's and move it. on to other things. We're done. Yeah. Um, can you wrap us up? Definitely. Thank you guys. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, hopefully you, 
you know, can learn from us and some of the things that we're doing well and not doing well. Let's continue to update on this. Uh, Yes. And in the comments below, if you know of any other videos that have inspired you about time management, uh, any skills, any apps, any ways of just making your life more efficient and focusing, please let us know in the description. We're learning every single day and we'll let you know. We'll update. So. Yeah, we will. I think that'll be really good and, and really important. So um, we I'm not sure exactly when this podcast will release. I think we've got a couple in between, but we just today released uh, Colonel Sanders mm-hmm. of KFC. Uh, Jake did a, a lot of extra editing for that podcast. It looks really great. Yep. So, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. I'll, I'll put an end card at the end of the video so you can yep. get a direct link to it. I but. wanted to do so much more, but my wife was like, nope. Or, <laughs> time management. You, yeah, she was like, "You told me you only had like this much time," and I was like, yeah. "You're right, you're right, you're right." And you know, because otherwise, I'd have spent two more days working on it. So yeah, it's one of our sorry, better podcasts. Yeah, but sorry, it's late. It was my fault. Well, I don't know. it's it, life is busy. Life is busy. That's you know, case in point. But check it out. It's super cool. Um, let us know what you think of that too. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. We're chasing mountains podcast. We're out. Thanks. The thoughts and opinions on this show do not reflect those of our advertisers, employers, or other affiliates. The content should not be considered legal or financial advice. The Chasing Mountains podcast is a production of Chasing Mountains Media. Copyright 2022.